A person who was good at fighting would not necessarily be good at commanding a war, and the Russian generals would prove it. This is the eighth video of the story of the First World War. Please subscribe to my channel to tell you the story of the First World War. Germany suffered defeat in the Battle of the Marne. The main reason is to transfer troops to the Eastern Front to resist the attack of Tsarist Russia. Originally, according to Count Stephen's idea, Tsarist Russia from the declaration of war to the accumulation of forces and then to launch an attack at least six to eight weeks. So Germany on the German-Russian border simply did not have many troops. So how could the Russian army come so quickly? Because the Russian army's battle plan was formulated with the help of the French. The French know that the weakness of the Russian army is slowness, so this plan, speed is the soul. The chief of the general staff of the French army is to repeatedly instill in the Russian generals the idea that they must take the initiative to attack. This method is particularly successful. Even the Tsar said, we will quickly strike at the heart of Germany. The common goal of our two countries, that is, Berlin, anywhere else, we are not interested. The former chief of the general staff of Tsarist Russia assured France that two weeks after the mobilization of the army, 800,000 Russian troops would be ready for battle, and as soon as the German-French war broke out, the French ambassador began to urge Tsarist Russia, why don't you attack? Hurry, we can't stand this. The commander-in-chief of the Russian army, Grand Duke Nicholas, is the Tsar's uncle, a pro-French, assured the French ambassador that I can attack without waiting for all my armies to gather, and the Tsar also said that we will do whatever it takes as soon as possible to open the road to Berlin. What about the Russians? Very determined. The slogans are shouting loudly, but the mobilization is quite slow. This is really not that they are lazy, but they are at this level. At that time, it took four to six days for the mobilization of the Russian army in the border areas. Five to eight days for the inland military districts. Six to twenty-one days for the distant military districts, 15 to 28 days for the second line troops, and the troops from Siberia took almost two months to arrive one after another. The main thing is that this transportation is very backward. Germany has 17 railway trunk lines to East Prussia, which can run 500 trains a day, and there are many branch lines from the trunk line to the border area. Once there is a situation on the border, German soldiers can reach the front line by overnight train and Tsarist Russia is different from inland cities to the Russian-German border. There are only six railway trunk lines, and there are too few branch lines. Originally, the railway is not good. Because I am afraid that Germany will invade Tsarist Russia, and I also came up with a way to deliberately turn the border area into a wasteland so that the German invasion became very troublesome, it is also very difficult to go out yourself. When the Russian army finally entered East Prussia, the problem of logistics transportation showed again the quality of the Russian army is poor. Then the level of logistics is even worse. The Russian generals do not even know how many logistics troops. They have, no one knows at all. The Russian attack on East Prussia was led by the Russian 1st and 2nd Armies, commanded by General Renenkampf and General Samsonov, and at first the attack was very successful. The German army was defeated, and the commander-in-chief of the German Eastern Front was Pritwitz. Commander of the 8th Army, the general was shocked that this Pritwitz had little ability and was famous mainly for his ability to eat and tell erotic jokes, which Wilhelm II admired, and as soon as he appreciated it, he was promoted, all the way to the commander of the army group, Pridwitz as soon as he heard that the war was unfavorable, he immediately ordered the whole army to retreat, the head of the operations department of the 8th army, Colonel Hoffman was ordered to retreat and immediately objected, Colonel Hoffman is a Russian expert, too aware of the combat capabilities of the Russians. He said that the Russian army telegrams intercepted by us at the front are all in clear code. Now the war has begun. The Russians still use clear code telegrams. This is not that the Russian army looks down on the German army, but they do not even have a password system. That is, the Russians will not fight this modern war at all. During the Russo-Japanese War, Hoffman worked as a military observer in the Russian army and saw how loose the military discipline of the Russian army was, and for Renenkampf and Samsonov, Hoffman was very familiar with it when Renenkampf and Samsonov were division commanders because of the reason Samsonov's forces, in the face of imminent defeat, wanted reinforcements from Renenkampf. But Renenkampf found various reasons not to help Samsonov, so later when they met on the platform of 
the Shenyang railway station, they began to quarrel, and then they fought, until they rolled on the ground, two division commanders, two generals completely disregarded the appearance of the soldiers, the same as the shrew, and this scene happened to be seen by Hoffman, so the two used to have a bad relationship, and now it is the same, there must be many problems. So Hoffman wrote a battle plan and prepared to concentrate superior forces to defeat Samsonov first, then to solve the Renenkampf. So Hoffman took the plan to meet Pridwitz and the chief of staff Wadisi, who was also a fool who was promoted to the rank of official by his own family honor. Pridwitz and Wadisi were not at all interested in Hoffman's battle plan and must retreat, but then Hoffman finally convinced both of them, and that's when Pridwitz and Wadisi was dismissed at the same time, and they were replaced by very famous people, who succeeded the commander-in-chief of the Eastern Front by Paul, Vaughn, General Hindenburg, and the chief of staff was replaced by Eric, Vaughn, Ludendorff. Now Hindenburg is now 67 years old, originally retired at home, at this time, was sent to preside over the Eastern Front war work because this German high command believes that Hindenburg has seniority and prestige, but the actual command of the battle needs to rely on Ludendorff. Ludendorff is only a major general at this time. When attacking the fortress of Liege, a brigade commander died. Ludendorff was ordered to become an acting brigade commander, and he performed very well. And now the Eastern Front is urgent, and the first person in the general staff to remember that. He can turn the tide as him, but I am afraid that he is not qualified enough, because he is not even a nobleman, and his character is very strong, so he let Hindenburg support him, the golden partner of the future German army, so they came together. As soon as Hindenburg and Ludendorff took office, they adjusted their military deployment on the basis of Hoffman's plan, preparing to break through each of the Russian troops, and the Germans left only one cavalry division, dragging down the Russian First Army, this cavalry division, every day during the day swaggering marches, and raised a large cloud of smoke, quietly sneaked back to the place of departure at night, and again the next day, and so on many times, pretending that there were many troops, and the Russians did not know what was going on. Just fooled, Renenkamp found that there were countless troops in Germany, and they did not dare to advance at all, and then Ludendorff ordered the German troops on Samzalov's side, pretending to fail to retreat, and the Russian army was really deceived again, because Samzalov ordered pursuit. Some troops chased 150 miles in just 12 days, very tired, and finally Samzalov's troops completely got into the encirclement, and the Germans immediately moved their troops from both wings to encircle, and instantly closed the encirclement. Samzalov was fooled at this time, and only sent continuous telegrams to Renenkampf, I need your help, for the sake of the Tsar, but Renenkampf, remembering the hatred of the fight at the Shenyang railway station in those years looked for various reasons either the car broke down or went the wrong way or got sick or did not go to help samzalov the time came to august 27th 1941 samsonov's end came the hungry and tired russian army was completely defeated the soldiers fled like crazy the germans drove them together like flock of sheep and the Russian 2nd Army was completely destroyed. Two of the five corps commanders were captured. Samsonov himself shot himself in a forest, and the Germans achieved a perfect victory. So what should be the name of this war? According to tradition, it was generally according to the name of the place, such as the battle near the Marne. It was called the Battle of the Marne, so Ludendorff was ready to name this battle this Battle of Frogna, because his last order was issued in a small village called Frogna, but Hoffman said, our battle should be called the Battle of Tannenberg. Why? Tannenberg is not far from here. More than 500 years ago, the Teutonic Knights were defeated by the Polish-Lithuanian army at Tan Castle, and the heads of the Knights were cut off, which is a great shame for our Germanic nation, so we now use the Battle of Tannenberg to name this great victory, which can wash away the shame of the last defeat and lift the spirit of the Germans, Ludendorff listened. Or you have a high consciousness, so decided, in the future this battle will be called. The Battle of Tannenberg at the Battle of Tannenberg, the Germans completely annihilated the Second Army of Tsarist Russia, and two weeks later, Ludendorff severely damaged the First Army of Tsarist Russia, and the Russian commander Renenkampf abandoned his troops and fled on his own motorcycle, and was relieved of his military post by the Tsar. From this point it can be seen how loose the military discipline of Tsarist Russia is. Renenkampf first did not help the accomplices, and then threw down the troops. 
themselves and fled, which may be a capital crime in the army of any country, but in Russia, it is just a dismissal, not even a punishment, so how can the combat effectiveness of the Russian army be strong? After two defeats, the Russian army lost more than 250,000, while the German army lost only 20,000 people. Tsarist Russia was expelled from East Prussia and lost the strategic initiative on the Eastern Front. The German side fought a big victory, but the chief of the general staff Malka Jr. did not release the news at the first time and waited until the defeat of the German army on the Western Front in the Battle of the Marne and the mood of the whole country was depressed before declaring. This victory, and then the forgetful Germans immediately forgot the defeat of the Marne and began to celebrate the victory, and the newspapers carried full-page propaganda about the victory of Tannenberg, and Hindenburg became a big hero overnight. The Kaiser awarded Hindenburg the rank of Field Marshal in World War I. Germany had only five Field Marshals, unlike 19 in World War II, and appointed Hindenburg as Commander-in-Chief of the German Army on the Eastern Front. The whole country set off the Hindenburg fever. Berlin built the Hindenburg Monument, many streets, squares, named after Hindenburg. Many universities awarded him the title of honorary doctorate. Various goods named after Hindenburg appeared on the market, and General Ludendorff as the actual commander of the campaign, but he did not receive the corresponding honor, which has a lot to do with the fact that he is not a nobleman. Many people complained about Ludendorff, such as Hoffman, who was promoted to Major General after the battle, led people to visit the Tannenberg battlefield. He told people, you look here, this is before the battle, the field marshal sleeps, you look here, this is where he slept during the battle, and here is where he slept after the battle, that is to say, the whole battle, the field marshal has been sleeping, in fact. Hindenburg is very recognized by Ludendorff, he commented, Ludendorff was. A qualified field commander, he knew that leaving the details to his subordinates, he would not intervene too much personally, so Hindenburg wrote to the German emperor that Ludendorff had become my loyal advisor and friend, I trusted him completely, no one could replace him, and since then, Hindenburg and Ludendorff have been partners, known as a pair of generals. The Tsarist side found that it really could not win against Germany, so it would find a bad opponent, then it could only be Austria-Hungary, and in September 1914, the Russian army besieged the Austro-Hungarian fortress of Przemysl. that after a 194-day siege, 110,000 Austro-Hungarian defenders surrendered to the Russian army, the morale of Austria-Hungary plummeted. And there was a possibility of total collapse, so Germany hurried to support, formed a German-Austro-Hungarian coalition to launch a counterattack, not only recovered the lost territory, but also captured a large area of Tsarist territory including Warsaw, and the Russian army lost more than 1.7 million people, but these people did not matter to Tsarist Russia. Since the beginning of the war, Tsarist Russia has newly recruited 13 million soldiers at that time. When a British envoy expressed condolences for the loss of the Russian army, the Minister of War of Tsarist Russia told him, don't feel sorry for this. People are the only surplus resources we have here, although the German-Austrian army won, but not after all, the strength is insufficient, there is no strength to continue the attack, the Eastern Front battlefield is also deadlocked, and at this time, in the distant Asian-European junction, the Ottoman-Turkish Empire, which has always been weak, suddenly joined the war. So what's going on here? Please subscribe to my channel to tell you the story of World War I.